Good. Nice to see you. Mm. Oh, broadcast is live. Oh, oh we, we are. No, we we can catch up live. You, Jack, you know how we do. Wow, we do. what's happening? We just Have do you already people. done one? Yeah, I did. I did uh, an Avatar one a uh, couple couple months ago. Yeah, Avatar. Oh, what's that? I've never even heard of that show. It's right. a James. Cam- it's not a show. It's a James Cameron movie. Oh, I see. Where you yeah. go deep into space to find unobtainium. Okay. And Giovanni Ribisi golfs. I don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> I love Jack. I'm loving your pink so braids. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, very nice. It's rad. I, the hair, the hair was like the first thing when we did hang out when we did the warm up yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, Sasha's hair is so cool, and we didn't tell. <laughs> I have to say something. Whenever I go shopping, shopping now, I'm like on Sasha's Instagram. Like, what are people wearing these days? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool one. Yeah. Are you fashion forward? Is that your jam? Is there a lot of fashion? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a. I'm a fashionista. Okay. <laughs> if she does say so herself. <laughs> Did, she is you're though. Cool she is. I, I, you just have a cooler vibe than we do. I. You know. I get Thank it. You. I feel. I a little... my vibes from my sister. Okay. Okay. I remember even when you were like, I guess 11, you had these like little dungarees yeah, yeah, that you yeah. used to wear. <laughs> they were cute. I, like I would wear now. Really but I got, I got some new overalls. So I'm really happy. Are overalls the thing again? Is that like, they're like back in? I mean, kind of, I think. I, I haven't like seen anyone at my school wear them. I'm, so I've you're been, ahead though. You're a fashionista. You're, you're I miles know. ahead. Yeah, I feel I like they're always in. Should <laughs> I start overall. wearing overalls? Could I do that? You totally yeah. should. You 100%. And we, the, it does the, feel very practical. The internet needs it. Well, what if you could hold your cell phone right there in the front pocket? Yeah. Um, and if you don't wear a t shirt, then you know what it's like for a girl going to the toilet when she's wearing a jumpsuit. That's true. <laughs> right? Fully naked. Yeah. You're just naked. Don't, <laughs> wait, do you buy like red ones and wear a red hat because then. Oh yeah, it'll be a whole. That's a that, different look. Yeah, yeah, I'm not embracing that. What do we men's can... overalls not have zippers? The, well, Where would yeah. the zipper be? Tell me I'm they do. It usually I is. That. I don't think they do. <laughs> no. no. Where I mean, I had, in, All right. In the '90s, I had some overalls. Over when crisscross were were popping. No. Were thing. Did you have to wear them backwards? I mean, I shouldn't have. Half of the strong. I did, but I don't think I sh- should have. And luckily, yeah. there was no social media then. So was the zipper in the correct place when you wore them backwards? Did they make crisscross? I've come to understand there's no zipper, Brad. They, it looks, they have the like slit, like the stitch, as if there should be a zipper, but, but there was no zipper. What? It's that- decorative. <laughs> that is like okay so you probably the 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 decorative pockets on women's clothing is ridiculous paula uh, yeah it's the worst but it's kind of going out of fashion we're getting more pockets that's great. these days that's can great. we they've if, heard our demands like anything i have to like buy a bunch of men's clothes to get pockets really yeah i always shop in the men's section though i mean i buy everything like, secondhand i love vintage shopping well, it's I love vintage shopping. <laughs> is this the show are we are we in it oh yeah we've been rolling <laughs> oh yeah this Can is we this, talk about we're doing great okay okay so we'll we'll take no we haven't talked about fake cuffs you know there's fake zippers fake pockets what about fake mock turtlenecks that's another fake I wear okay well what are they called what, Dickies? what what makes it a mock what what it makes, makes like, it up to here and yeah, you can't like way. roll it down like you don't roll it down like it's like it's like there oh, oh i was just talking about the thing that you just wear underneath and there's no sh- shirt it's just like a necklace that looks like a, That's a thing. Oh. it's oh. called a dickie apparently i learned this Oh God. that's an old that's an old like that's a victorian era thing right you would wear just a like a dickie right. yeah 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 there's like and you button it all the way up but it'd just be here yes i didn't know that was a thing again that's Did, cool. Are the are the doily versions of them back? Is that's that a collar. A- that's something different. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. I thought it was just a frilly dicky. <laughs> what are those called? I just, <laughs> one, and walk me through time. the difference between an ascot and a scarf. Because I've never know. I've never gotten there. <laughs> I'll take it on further. Ascot scarf for cravat. Someone explain. A cravat even, yes. Uh, well, and and Callum, by the way, to make this very topical, what is yeah. that? Is it a cravat or a 
scarf or an ascot? It's a scarf. It's a scarf? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's scarf. scarf territory. I don't know if it's it a seems, scarf. Is it a tube, though? Like, can he can he pull the whole thing off? And it no, just... Now that I think about it, I think we do see him actually, like, throw it at some point. Oh, right? yes. So I think it is, like, a very normal scarf. <laughs> Rayla wears it for a while. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was adorable. When they tossed it, she's like, I'm going to. Okay, Jack, tell me, how did you luck out so hard that all of your care, your right, uh, Sokka and Callum, your shift and it's official and it's on screen and it takes place in the anime that like, how did you luck out with? Well, so that doesn't stop people from still talking to me about some other ships that are non canonical that they adore. Um, those come up plenty, but uh, but yeah, very lucky, and also the fun crossover of the moon, right? UA and Rayla both I date. Oh moon my spirits. gosh, Pretty how cool. did I that was so <laughs> lost on me until you just okay? So, cool. for everybody who is, if you were at the panels last night, then you totally already know this is right on point for how we do things at Color World. If this is your first panel, um, we're here to meet each other, hang out, have a good time. So we haven't seen each other in months in many cases. And sometimes it's the first time for people to meet each other. And so the, the free panel is the get to know you and we're just going to have a freaking blast. So well, there will be more fashion talk uh, and there will be some dragon prince talk. And then if you want to ask specific questions, grab any VIP item from our guests, go to their page. Um, I'll drop that link. Uh, in the chat and then any purchase from any actor gets you into the VIP. There are three VIP panels today. I'm so hype for, for today. Um, and then everyone who joined us last night, thank you. That was absolutely magical. And I think we're going to get, there's enough um, of a mage in Jack that we're going to get more magic happening right now. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. S Sasha, did you, you said your sister was your inspiration in terms of like you, like being a fashionista or does it come for like, do you have a mother or a grandma? Like, where does that trend start in your family? I think, mm, well, I just get, I get it all from my sister. Like she's but, very like, cool. Yeah. She, she's actually right there. Yo. <laughs> They're all saying Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, I tried to lean as though the angle that I was at would <laughs> come out. You? Yeah. I can see her now. <laughs> that's how cameras work, right? Just... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. VR, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, has does anybody play VR stuff? Sometimes I used to. I it freaks me out. I, I feel There's like I yeah, I'm already a high anxiety person. I feel like being okay. that immersed would be uh, too intense. Unless it was like a really friendly game, you know. <laughs> I play Candy Crush in VR. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Very relaxed. And not only is it anxious, anxiety provoking to be that immersed, but it really, I like get that immersed and that, though, like one or two times I've done it, I get that immersed and then also really think about my surrounding environment. Like I'm very, yeah. suddenly very afraid that someone's going to just like topple me over while I'm standing there. Oh, it's so oh. scary. It's so scary. It's so scary. Thank you. I'm glad it's not with me. I did one like Oculus game where there was like, dinosaurs coming at me, and I just oh. it was just flinching the whole time. And I was like, "This is not a game. This oh, is this fun." <laughs> it's always something trying to kill you, like zombies are running at you, or you're underwater and there's a shark, but you need to get some. It's terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a video game. Yeah. If Except for video game, if I, I know when I'm on my couch and it's just a screen, I go, yeah, I'm I'm a soldier. And I feel really <laughs> tough and cool. But if they were like shooting at me, I'm like, this is terrible. No, I'm just scared. And ambisonic sound where it's coming from every direct, you know. Okay. When I play video games, it's like, I'm starting a farm and I need to plant my corn. Oh, <laughs> that's adorable. That is adorable. Okay. So is everyone a gamer on the regular or is this just like, oh, I pick it up every now and then? Who Who is like, I'm I'm a gamer. You're in that category. No? I, I, I don't know if I count. I've been playing a very large amount of one game. What's that? It, I've been pl I play a lot of Slay the Spire. It's a, <laughs> it's a roguelike. Uh, it's like a... It's it's it simulates a card game. It's like a it's a very like complicated sort of like a puzzle game okay. that you're like an adventurer going through a, a a tower and you play. It's a deck builder, so okay. you're you're you know selecting yep. cards. Yep. It's a it's just like a real like a it's a it's a it's a 
it's a game that is like feels to me like infinitely replayable because I'm like st- I'm st- I'm still trying to get good. Like it's okay. very it's a very complex card game thing. I don't know. So I got I got obsessed with that. And so does that count as a gamer if oh, I play well, like a, I think so. I, I play I play hours wise a decent amount of video games, but my my breadth of knowledge of video games is like zero. I know like no games. I play no games except for this one for and one. sometimes Tetris. Oh, Tetris. Had, do you, are you the guy that, that packs the moving van when, when your friends are moving? Is that like how Tetris are oh, you? No, but just that's just laziness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gave you the soft. You could have made that into a practice. I could have sounded skill, very cool. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, no. Yeah, no. No, I guess like, yeah, geometrically I can see the way it should go. But no, but do I do it? it? No, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Anyone, anyone else have Pokemon Go is the is the poison of choice over here. Um, so I'm like, gonna... well, I'm just like I'm like Jack. I play one game, uh, which is uh, I think Diablo Two. Okay. Uh, a ridiculous. It's embarrassing how much, but it's like I play it with the sound off while I'm like listening to audiobooks or watching. T- it's like the thing. The yeah, that, exactly, thing. exactly. Okay. It, it, I, I got I got mine on my Switch, and it's just yeah. like. I can put, I can play it for like yeah. each game of it takes like an hour and a half and I'll just listen to a podcast and it's exactly. like, so not, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Tetris is my flying. Let's pretend I'm not in a giant metal tube in the air game. Tetris <laughs> is like, no, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Like I, it's just something to do. Okay. while not. I really, so I played, um, I have ADHD and I had, um, like an individualized educational program going through school and man, I was allowed to like have headphones on and I was allowed to like play with my magic cards, uh, under the t- you know, so that I wasn't like talking to the teacher all the time throughout the entire class. And, um, I, TI 85s yep. had games on them. You could get Dr. Mario and Tetris, basically the same game. Um, and I would play, I've probably logged 10, 10,000 hours. Wow. Uh, because all throughout college I was playing, all throughout high school I was playing, mm-hmm. and I literally am the guy in the moving van now who's like, they'll bring something, and my as fast as I can, I'm going to like, that is going to go here, and this is going to go, like, mm-hmm. and then I ended up getting called, like, every time somebody at our church would move, they'd be like, you're going you're gonna to want Brad in, that, in the van. Nice. And so then, yeah, it just became, like, real life applicable. You see what it? about, like, the Dr. Mario version of it? Because oh, that's yeah. a good one. I like that one. I love it. I It's the same game, but it, it just it feels different enough that you can feel like you're doing something different. Yeah. And you can, like, do it against it. You can do it competitively. Yes! You know, like, Which you can now do with Tetris. Tetris, Tetris 99. Really? This yeah. is when I got into it. Most, I, my, my resurgence was around Tetris 99, which is very competitive fun. Competitive Tetris? Tetris? Yeah, it's like a knockout mode where like you're playing Tetris and if you clear like a certain number, if you get like streaks going, you're sending, you send like your garbage to other people so it like fills their grid. And it gets people, you're playing against like- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's it's Tetris 99. So it's like a 99 person like battle battle arena mode where you're just like, and you're getting it from all sides. It's very fun. That sounds amazing. I think it's a free game. Okay. It's literally why I bought a Switch. (laughs) <laughs> my I, year. I wish I hadn't known about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you'll, get, you'll get way too deep. Omari, now we gotta stream it. Now we gotta play each other and stream it. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm game. I would do that. I yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm Jack. You just made your magic That's every right. time, as promised. <laughs> Sasha, what's your do I'm you, a mage? You are. Do you do you have anything, Sasha, that you mage? I mean like I would play Minecraft, Stardew Valley, Undertale. Uh, nice. Oh, Undertale. Cool. Undertale. Yeah. I just used to play. Oh, I used to. Okay. I love this game. I've been playing it a lot recently. It's called Humans Fall Flat. Oh. It's on the Nintendo. It's really good. Is it there's good? Like, there's like multiple levels of stuff, and you have to, like, I don't know. It's just, it's like you're a drunk person trying to move things oh. Oh, <laughs> to man. Get your different levels. This sounds awesome. <laughs> it's so fun. Humans really- Fall Flat. Yeah. Was, yeah, Jack's like right, mm. I'm writing it down. Yeah, yeah. It's a drunk person just trying to move stuff around their place. I know they're they're not drunk. Like it's just like these like little avatars. Like they don't have faces or anything or whatever. Like they're just like these little flat two dimensional. No, they're no. They're, like, they're three dimensional. They're just like big stickmen, like thick stickmen. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but they move as if they're drunk. Like it's just really hard to move them. 
Okay. Like college. That sounds like being like the college experience. <laughs> People were kind of moving yeah. awkwardly. The number of times I just like had to get up to move my desk chair and never made it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so on uh, on Undertale, do you play uh, Genocide Run or do you play? Um, I played Homicide. I, I know we play Homicide or just like okay. I yeah, I'm really scared to play Genocide. <laughs> so so you do the pass the, the pacifist one, right? Is the other one? Uh yes, I don't kill anyone. I just kind of okay. The pacifist. Oh okay. I've I've heard like life. It's life changing if you if you play the other way. The genocide, yeah. My I used to watch my brother play the genocide one, which is why I didn't want to. Like, like no. yeah, like at, it's just the end really messes you up. Like it's just like just yeah. messes you up with your brain. Yeah. You know? the That's what... genocide mode messes you up. Yeah. <laughs> I I know right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, Paula. What about you? What's what's the thing? Oh, I never got past Super Nintendo, and now I don't have a TV old enough to plug that into. So I still have a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo, but like I never played it. I played The Sims on my computer or like okay. Harvest Moon, but it's the only thing I've played recently is is The Sims. At the start of the pandemic, I was like, you know what? It was on sale for four dollars. Yes. <laughs> so I did that for about a month before I was like, I should shower. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's epic okay uh this anime is some of the most spectacular content that's ever been made um i love i love this panel because amari you start out where where everybody on the panel with is like you're hunting them what yeah. was was that um how much did they give you when they when they send you out to track down these these people that have stolen this thing and then and then like tell me about the progression from hunter to protector it's interesting like both as an actor like a you know professional actor yeah. and as a character in something where you go through this phase and i don't know if you guys are the same where first you're like awesome i'm on this awesome show this is really exciting and then immediately i go to like oh man i hope i do a good job and bring it because you start seeing who the cast is oh. right so first you're just thinking like okay like i gotta play this role and i'm tracking and then you're like i hope for me at least, because I wasn't a series regular. I was like, I hope that they bring me back again. And then the, the creators were so cool and they, they hinted early on that, you know, Corvus will play a bigger role later on. And they kind of started leaking stuff and then you start getting your scripts. And uh, back when I used to, to do more live action stuff, I had this running joke when I was on a show where I would look and type my character's name in the PDF and make sure I didn't die first thing. I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. It doesn't say, <laughs> yeah, I can do the script now, right? But this was cool because I just I kept seeing, you know, getting more stuff for Corvus. And and then it was this beautiful arc where, yeah, it yeah. went from like this kind of Boba Fett shady yeah. dude who people didn't know about to like being, you know, protect protector and joining the good guys. And I, I told Sasha the other day when we were talking that I I really wasn't into Ezrin. Uh, Jack's this these comments will sound familiar, right? Since uh, the first thing I ever said to Jack on the panel was how much I hated Sokka, and that I didn't watch um, Avatar: the Last Airbender for like ten years because I, after two episodes of Sokka, I was like, I'm done with this. I can't watch this guy. But by the <laughs> I actually don't remember it going that far when you said it last time. So wow, I just remember you saying you didn't like the character, not like change the channel, break your TV, throw up, like disconnect cable. It was, right. it was ten. It was ten years. I I did not right. right. panels half the 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 guests are dressed as Sokka. So this is the first time ever. Heard this. Oh man! <laughs> he starts off. He's a kind of a. He's pretty like. He's, he's misogynist. He's kind of, he's very whiny. You know, he grows a lot. Oh, a ton. In fact, he is my favorite character in Avatar The Last Airbender. It is absolutely, I, I told Jack, I couldn't believe, I, I literally wouldn't watch it for 10 years. And I only watched it because Chofer's like, I, I have the whole cast. Do you want to do this event? I'm like, of course I want to do this event. You, the whole cast, let's do this. And then I watched it and I was like, Oh, Jack, man, what did you do to me? It, it's, uh, it's, it's all right. It's <laughs> unbelievable. You gotta at least ride it out till he meets Suki and, you know, she straightens him out a little bit, you know. <laughs> Behind every, uh, uh, every straight man is, a, is an even better woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I saw it was the same thing for me. I, I was absolutely 
thrilled to see what you did to me and how you changed. Um, I, I really just, to me, I was like, I get it. Dragon Prince. Okay. Can we get back to all the other characters? And then by the end of it, um, just, just something spectacular for you. What? So first of all, how did you audition? How did it come up? How did you um, start in, in acting? Um, tell me about your journey to get in front of the microphone. And then what has it been like for you to, I, I almost feel like there's a parallel between him staring at that crown, how many times he, he like looks and he won't put it on. Tell me about your journey. Um, well, I mean, I started acting as a baby and I only did like on camera, like just nothing okay. else. And like, I, I mean, I would try out for voice acting, but never got anything. Cause like I would either sound way too girly or even oh. too boy. And like, they were like, yeah, we can't use your voice. Like, it's just, it's not <laughs> worth using. And um, yeah, so like, I just worked my way up just doing like small little on camera parts. And then like this one day I was like, oh, there's, there's this like thing from like, if I get this, like I'm going to be with soccer. Like I was in the fan of Avatar The Last <laughs> Airbender for the longest time ever since That's I was three. Awesome. There's like little videos yeah. of me like just pretending to airbend and like waterbend and stuff. That's awesome. And like, yeah, it's just, it's so cute. But um, yeah, I, I like it. I, the, the, that relationship, the Callum Ezrin relationship to me is like, it's so much of uh, when I started reading the scripts, it's so much of how I like anchored Callum to me was was to play off of that relationship was to think like, OK, here's a guy who's like not sure about himself, not sure about his place in the world. But he has to step into this role as a big brother in a real like important way. And that was something that I was like very excited to discover and find and then get in a read with Sasha. It was just immediately like, oh, what? Like, I just wanted to protect that character immediately. I find Ezra right from the beginning to have such a like, I, I just love Sasha's voice. And I think that character is so immediately likable that it's like, yeah, you, you want to like assume the responsibility and try and like keep the weight of the world off of this kid who it's all piling on so yeah. quickly. I just love that character. I, I think what was um, what I love about Dragon Prince. And I, I think um, representation is so important, so important. And I, I think that what I have kind of like failed to see for myself is that I have trouble with a lot of anime because they're all kids in high school. They're like literally all teenagers and Dragon Prince. There are plenty of adults around. And so I have kind of understated the importance of, something gets bigger because adults can watch it and they can, they can say, Oh, I, well, I can love Corvus. I don't have to care about, but there's all these other adults around that are doing spectacular things that are very much part of the story. And in, in so many animes, the adults are idiots and it's like, right. The kids just want to like, they're making fun of them when they're, and as soon as they're gone, like everyone forgets that adults are exist. And I think what is beautiful about dragon Prince is e even the age range is representative of what the world around us looks like. Yeah. And yeah. it like shows that like kids can do anything, like anything that they set their mind to, they can like help the world. They can change anything. And that what is, uh, cause Paula, you, you have two characters. Um, yeah. Opelli and Rayla. I, I mean, also, three, Berto. Right? also Berto. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I feel like <clears throat> the, the big, like, what what is so massive is what you offer in that to Prince Ezrin in terms of Corvus is there to like physically protect Ezrin, but she is there to like allow Ezrin to grow as a person and to say mm -hmm. like your throne is not in jeopardy. You are the king. Like we'll hold down the fort in the meantime. And uh, Sasha, something that like adults have such a role in how great kids are. And then if you hold the bar to here, then that the kid will just grab the bar. But if you hold the bar to here, the kid becomes the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, like, like in my family, like the, the bar is always like, it just goes up as I'm going up. Like, it's like, as I, as if I set my own bar. Cause like my parents give me like enough of that support. Like my whole family gives me like enough support to help me find my own bar, to help me like achieve my own goals. And like, they put me in like a really good mindset to like try and be the best person I can be. And 
I'm just glad that I have like good role, mo- good role models. And I have this amazing older sister and amazing older brother to help me like along the way. That's badass. I, I love it. No, Paula. I'll, I'll just nope. add, it, it's interesting playing uh, your protector on the show. I don't know if they did this on purpose, but I was next to you in studio for all of the sessions. And because, you know, diversity has always been something that's, that's so important to me. When I saw who was casting the role, I immediately felt this super like, you know, protective, like, oh, that's so awesome. They cast this young black girl, it's this awesome big role. And it's one of her first big credits. And between that and standing next to you, immediately I felt this like sense of like being protective. And so it, it's interesting to see how like the uh, whole yeah. out on screen too. Did you, did you, did you have some of those similar, I, I don't know, you tell what was your experience, Sasha, from, from your angle? For me, it felt like I wasn't alone in anything. Like I never felt alone no matter what, but it was cool to like see someone that like was like me. Like I, there's just always someone there to like protect me. And even that he's protecting me in the show, I felt like he's protecting me like in real life too. Cause like, he's going to go through the same things as me as well. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be alone through anything. I mean, no matter what, even if he wasn't there, I'm not going to go alone through anything, but it's yep. just nice to have someone that's more like me. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Paula, what what was your experience? How did you find Dragon Prince? Did you, how many characters did you audition for? Oh, um, well, I mean, I got an email, just like with any audition. I got yeah. an email and Rayla, possibly Scottish is what it said. <laughs> So I auditioned for Rayla. And actually when Apelli came along, when we started, I was just standing in because they hadn't cast, cast it. her. Yeah. yeah. So I just read for, I think we got five episodes in of Opelli before they stopped mentioning doing auditions for her. And I was like, well, I guess that's me now. And then we started <laughs> to be like, oh, okay. Then there was like, does she sound like Rayla? There's some questions. Um, because Apelli is... <clears throat> not too far off my natural voice. She's got like maybe more resonance and a little bit more grounded than me. But um, whereas Rayla does sound more like me, but Scottish. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, I didn't audition for Opelli. I didn't audition. I did audition for Rayla. Berto was the scariest. I just got an email at about 9 p.m. the night before saying Paula will be playing the role of Berto. And I was like, you mean Jack? Jack will be playing the role of Berto. <laughs> well, it wasn't in me. It lives in you. Berto had to come out of you, Paula. I just, I have never faced terror. Like going into the studio that day, having no idea what they expected. And just being like, I'm a parrot. Like, I just, <laughs> and I'm the worst for that. They'll be like, Paula, do a soldier voice. And I'll be like, Oh, I'm a man, and I'm like, you know, like, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm a soldier. Like I'm just <laughs> weird biases come out there, Paula. That's <laughs> oh, that's a commentary on how you see us, how you see men. Oh, man. <laughs> Interesting. Like, what was the scene where um they're it's before they go up to the the moon nexus and it's like jason's like my sword is so big i don't like, this isn't even like, my biggest sword yeah, I, yeah 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 and i had to be i had to say something and i yeah very very biased apparently i thought i had to <laughs> but bear was terrifying opelli i did not audition for i was a stand-in and, and i grew into the role i i guess i could say rayla was um i it, it was funny because I've told this story. You guys have all heard the story a million times, but I got the audition and I didn't do it. I was like, I haven't been cast in anything on voice. Like I'm not doing it. And then it came back two weeks later, which has never happened in my career. Mm. Any other time the audition came back and then I did it and I did it. Everyone's always like, what equipment do I buy? And I did it on my, I think iPhone five at the time with my headphones, yeah. not in a sound standing by my front door, like oh, no. always Open. walking. Cars honking. <laughs> it, was, it was just like was a concert was, happening, a parade. Going on. <laughs> it was ridiculous. The worst audition I've ever done. But um, oh, was of, it? Apparently what? not. Apparently it yeah. wasn't. Yeah. One of the writers on the show is from a town in Scotland, very close to the town in Scotland that I'm from, and so oh. I think he liked the accent that I used because Scotland yeah. has a variety of accents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that that might have 
Ian helped me out there, I think. Oh man. It it's um it's hard not to have Rayla as as the favorite. She is um did you did at what point did you were you aware did you find out that she was just not going to kill anyone? Oh, um well, I think that we did the first I mean I, I mean she still could she she could, but the longer it goes and the more she faces, uh, you know, for a while I was like, oh, is this the person? Is this the person? Is this the person? And then I was like, I, I don't, I, she's Batman. She'll punch them as hard as she wants to, but she's not going to kill them. I think she is a trained assassin and she protects what she thinks needs protected. And I, I don't think she understood um, why this prince or this king had to die. And so I think she had a confusion of her values. Like it didn't make sense to her and her morality. I don't necessarily think that she doesn't have it inside her. Oh, I, I, I'm saying she's so the, the right. The rub with Batman is he won't kill anybody. He yeah. He'll put everybody he can catch in jail, but Batman will not take a life. And I, that Rayla is very much that, badass character that just like like i said she'll knock you the out and drag you wherever and you can get tied up chained up locked up whatever but you're gonna you're gonna wake up tomorrow whereas i don't know, I don't know if i agree we'll see really? are you okay 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 we man. i mean i don't i don't ha i don't know any secrets i'm not hiding anything no. like there's no scheduled murder <laughs> ahead but um <laughs> Yeah, you gotta oh. usually you gotta book those pretty far in advance. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I'm curious. If you, were, if you were to murder a cast member, who would you murder? Oh, um. <laughs> no, um. I'm not saying you want to. I'm saying you know. I wanted to. Um, <laughs> if you had, if you had. Gun to your head. I can't. Gun to oh. someone else's head. Oh. Soren would no. Oh, <laughs> no. Soren's out. No. Yeah, I love it. I get it. Soren, so much. Oh man. Uh, you, Jesse. you see though, even when even when Amari tried to make you pick somebody, you can't. You yeah. Can't. That's true. Okay. I, I love it. Jack, what um was it hard for you to make a differentiation between Sokka and Callum? Like in your head. How did you go one way or the other? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a little bit tricky, particularly because, like, uh, you know, he's, Aaron. Sorry, he's goofy. Uh, like, there's a lot of. I think a lot of the sense of humor. There's some crossover. Yep. yep. Um, obviously, Aaron and Giancarlo um, worked with me on Avatar and 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 brought me on here, so I knew like. You know, it wasn't pure coincidence. Obviously, like right, they right, they right. were writing this character and thinking yeah, yeah. on some level about yep. the way he relates to Sokka and that there are some similarities. So I didn't want to like come in and be like, okay, but it can't sound at all like that. I'm not doing any of that shit. This is all <laughs> you know. I, I knew I wanted to bring uh, what they were looking for there. Yeah. Um, but I do like to me the like the big uh, I, what I was talking about before about um the the Ezrin relationship. Yeah. That's a very like unique to Callum thing yep. that I really kind of leaned into discovering the character through that, through his um, like insecurity about his place in the world. And then uh, the connection with, with his brother. And there's some of that in Sokka, but I think a lot of the stuff that's in Sokka about that kind of gets explored much later down the line, you know, like Sokka's master episode is in some ways similar to like, Callum's journey where like he's suddenly unsure or not suddenly right. but he's like unsure about his place in the world and he discovers yep. this thing that he's good at and he wants to um but a lot of the beginning of Sokka and a lot of where like I kind of built that character off of is his like stubborn overconfidence that his way is right uh, oh, uh, and yeah. that to me is like very fundamentally different from Callum yeah. like, Callum oh, is, yeah. uh, is very like open vulnerable yep. Yep. unsure of his place in the world guy. So I, I, I wanted to really like anchor him in that stuff um, without really worrying about like, oh, so therefore, you know, while going like, yeah. And then if they both are goofy and, and, and both make some puns and my voice squeaks sometimes when I let it, that's fine. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't, I wanted to really focus on what are the emotional things that makes this guy tick and focus on that and not think too much about. Did different. you, 
when you when you have to break that um the ball that contains right the 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 ability for humans to do magic when you had to break that did you feel like did you have any sense of where he was going to go from there did you did you feel like man like how how far away did you feel magic was to callum when he breaks that yeah i mean uh uh i i love that plot decision i think that's so incredibly cool to like take this guy who feels like he doesn't fit anywhere in the world and he finds his thing and he has to give up that exact thing yeah. in a very like real tangible way. He yep. has to sacrifice this sense of identity that he just discovered. Um, yeah. And I was, uh, so plow, I just think that's brilliant. And, and uh, I think I, I think I assumed at some point we would find his way back, okay. but I love that journey. And I knew like, yeah, it can't be like, Oh, and then the next day he finds a, a tornado orb and everything's chill. It's like, no, he has to like, start yeah. back over and, yeah. and find and i i love the care that they took with that 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 it wasn't rushed that like we, he really had to find this other path to magic and he had to find it within himself uh after getting this external source um so uh, yeah i figured we were getting back there some way but that yeah. journey i think was just lovely did when you did the when you jump off the cliff did you like, had you already read ahead? H- how much of that? Um, Cause I have to say, if I'm, if I'm being honest and I think back, uh, I don't know that I question Callum. Like when he's like, I need you to teach me the flying wing thing. And he's like, kid, you're crazy. Like that's not a human thing, but you were so serious in that moment. And I'm like, well, he's, he's never led me yet. Yeah, Ca- yeah, yeah. You know how, like, did you know, that it was going to work when you jump off the cliff or are you like, how far ahead are you reading when you, when Callum jumps off that cliff? Fast enough that there wasn't like a long time where I was like, Oh no, he's, he dead. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, It was pretty. Yeah. 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 Um, I also feel like the, the stakes of that moment and everything he's gone through to earn that like magical yeah. ability within himself. It just feels right. It feels like he's gonna pull this off yeah. and in the way. Because it, it didn't yeah. feel cliche. I think in that moment, it would have been very easy to feel like, oh, sure, he's like, of course. But I just, I, I you did such a great job convincing me that you had it under control. Right. That, that <laughs> when you jump off the cliff, I'm like, we're going to see what happens. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I don't know that I had resigned myself that like, oh, this is the moment where the wings work. I just. Bro, I, uh, yeah, there, there's some. Yeah, that, that to me was so like. Uh, uh, so much of the Callum journey is like finding that self-assuredness, the confidence that this thing can come from within him in the, like in the season two stuff where he's in that um, like dark magic coma state. And he's talking to this other version of himself. The thing that I really thought about for that other version of himself is that like, that's just someone who's just, that's him, but in control. That's just like a version of him where like, He's in control of his breath. He's calm. He's collected. He knows what he's got to do. He's just, it's who Callum could so easily be uh, if he took the shortcut down the dark magic path or who Callum can become if he really earns it through this other path. Um, So that's the thing I really think about a lot with him. Uh, Specifically, like I think a lot about breath because that's like what unlocks the magic for him. So I focus when playing that character on like, when can he breathe well and when can he not breathe well? And that moment, at the end there is like, yeah, this needs to be a moment where like he is in control of this. He knows what he's got to do. He knows enough of how to do it. He has a sense and he, and he commits. I love it. Sasha, the, the relationship between the two brothers, um, it was really interesting to me. I, I feel like I didn't question it. Like I'm, I'm seeing that they don't look like each other. And in the beginning, you don't have any backstory as to why they're somehow brothers. Um, what was it hard for you to buy that? Or, or were there things in the, like, how much did you know in calling Callum your brother? Cause it was, I never doubted you for a second when you're like, no, that's my brother. I just, I didn't know at what point in the story I was going to find out why that was true, but I bought it from the beginning. What was that? How much did you know ahead of time? Tell me about that. Well, I knew that I had a brother. I thought that he would be like, like more like me, I guess. 
but yeah no I came into it like thinking that either we were both like the same or I don't know but I mean I just kind of thought of him as my own brother like whenever I'm talking to Jack or Callum like whenever Ezra's talking to Callum I just think oh yeah that's just my brother like just pretend as if you're talking to your older brother right now or as if you're talking to one of your best friends because I mean that's how you should treat your siblings like yeah I treat them like my best friends. Like I tell them everything. We talk about everything. We're always there for each other. And I really have to connect with Ezrin and I have to know what he's thinking. Like if I was in that situation, how would I talk to them? How would I be in that situation? It was, it, it's, it's beautiful to, to be honest in terms of, um, you know, blended families are a very real thing. Um, and thankfully they happen more and more as, as humanity kind of comes to understand that we are so much more alike than different, but then the, the adversity that those families face when the outside world looks at them and goes, this thing that you've done is not right. That it was uh, amazing to see. I never doubted for a second that, that Callum and Ezra were brothers. Um, and I think it's a huge testament to, that magic that you brought into the room that we, we all then b believed we took your word for it is essentially how it felt. I think it's because he's been there since I was a baby that like, we've just always had that bond. It's like any other sibling bond. You're not going to think of it as anything. Cause you're so young. Like you just, you just know that they're always there for you. You just know yep. that they're always going to be there. Yeah. Super cool. Paula, what is, what is your favorite thing about Rayla? Hmm. I think, um, I mean, it's a trio. I think she's strong and I think she finds the courage to be vulnerable, which is such a strength, but then also her sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, of course, like her, her development and being able to be vulnerable with um, Callum and Ezrin is such a strength. I think she, she has this physical strength and agility that is so dominant in her character from the start. But the, I think the strength that it takes to be vulnerable is yeah. That's just real. It's big. real. Strength. Yeah. 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 I mean, they yeah. both are real strengths. Um, Amari, did you see the parallel between Rayla and Corvus in turn? Like they literally both start down the same path. And interestingly enough, end up at the same place. Did you did you see that? Had you watched? Well, interestingly, and and like you know, Corvus was introduced fighting Rayla, and it was sim it was ironic and kind of cool that they they started off fighting and then working together. So I don't know if I, I saw it coming, but it definitely made sense. I know you know Jack's commented on this, but the writing, not just in terms of dialogue, but in terms of structure and plot of the show, never do. Like, is that me doubling? Is that my microphone doubling? I don't know. No, I think we're hearing, uh, hold on one sec. Sorry. All right, oh, there you go. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm like, there's like Game of Thrones level complexity to the, the story arcs of this show that as a writer myself, it, I'm just amazed at how intricate and intertwined the stories are. So I didn't, I, it made, it's one of those things where with great writing, like I didn't see it coming, but it made perfect sense when I saw the journeys intersect. It, it was neat to to think about the dynamic between Ezra and Cal is like, like people come to kill them and everybody yeah. that comes to kill them falls in love with right. Soren essentially has the same journey that Rayla and it's everybody that they send to end these two, yeah. that there's the, the, the bond, the magic. And it's interesting Jack, that uh, you, you would think the logical choice is Callum because he's older, like literally just because he's older, that that would be who the who the next king is. But I I don't know. Did you was there ever any discussion of or trying to create a sense that Callum was the the, the prince? How did it? How was it so clearly Ezrin? I mean. That was the thing that I, I liked uh, originally that he's this like he's in the royal family, but because his father is not the king, 
Callum is not in the line of succession and 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 knows that. And that's just like a truth about him. And he sees himself as like separate from that. Um, so so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they okay toyed around with the idea of like playing that in the plot, but I but I uh yeah, I always really like that it's like yeah, he's this side side part of the family that yeah. doesn't doesn't relate to the to the crown and and that's so much of what I love about the Callum Ezra relationship, the protectiveness of like, yep. I know that you have this burden that you're going to have to carry someday that I, that I don't have. And it makes it sometimes I feel lesser cause whatever, but like, I want to protect you from what yeah. the world be for you. I mean, those characters are always so interesting when you're like adjacent to power and you have all the access, but you know you're never going to wear the crown. Yeah, like the the perspective that must give you and how you navigate. I always love those characters and shows. I think it's also really interesting in the dynamic that um, Callum and Soren have at the top, where Soren is training him, but it's just futile. Like <laughs> no one's really trying that hard because it doesn't matter for his. He's not going to be the king, so he doesn't yeah. really necessarily need those skills. He's not very good at it. So yeah. <laughs> But I, I will tell you one thing that came from that that little tiny arc that never left me is, oh my gosh, do I love Claudia. Mm, I yeah. I don't ship them at all. Like my daughter will be like, dad, you're a terrible person. Claudia's evil. You're the worst. I can't believe you like her. I don't ship her at all with Cal. I'm like, I don't ship her with Callum either. Like, I'm not stupid. I see Rayla. I don't need her. She doesn't need <laughs> Callum to be amazing. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. All on her own, and, and up until you know the last episode of season three. <laughs> no, she's very much not. Yeah. Well, what I the thing that keeps her, what I told um, Raquel is she, she's within reach. I feel like um, Claudia is still within reach, whereas I feel like um, Viren has gotten beyond beyond my reach. Yeah. And mm. you, right. Um, and you talked about that access to power, and it's interesting how beautifully Callum navigates that access and that proximity. Whereas Viren does not do well being that close to power. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'd be hard if you get a taste, right? Nobody ever thinks everybody goes, I'll control it. You know, just think about like, uh, you know, in Lord of the Rings, everybody goes, if, but if I have the ring, I'll be able to handle it. I'll be fine. And of course it corrupts and it goes bad. And we know this, we know that it's a trope, but the characters never know it when they're doing it. So I feel for, for it. But I but- do, I do buy, I do. It does feel like so much of his logic is comes from this like caretaker role that he does think he can just sort of like, no, he knows what's best for the realm and he can keep it warm till Ezra's ready. I do think like there is some sincerity there from Viren, but yeah, he just uh just gets further and further down a hole that he can't yeah. get out of. Yeah, <laughs> even even Thanos thought he was doing the right thing. <laughs> I'm making balance. I can <laughs> so I think that uh, and you guys feel feel free to slap me if you think I'm wrong, but Thanos is a much better person than Viren. Thanos wow. Thanos um believes in in what he believes and he sticks to his principles and every time you meet Thanos he's the same person. Viren lies to himself and says that he that his intent is but in in that trek into the into the magical realm um you see he's like oh so you you want to destroy these people and he's like no no oh so you want to co- and he keeps saying and then all of a sudden he's like uh i i don't have a reason to be here i right he gets questioned yeah. question and he he literally arri- and you could see it on his face that's the beautiful part of how well this is animated is you can see the moment that Viren realizes he's an evil son of a um and so when faced with that moment, he decides to be an evil son of a, and Thanos never has that moment. Thanos always is who he says he is. Viren's a lion son of a, and he's lying to himself first. And then he lies to the world. And then he's like, I don't believe that. So I'm going to lie to myself. I'm going to have to lie a little more. And when you start lying to yourself and you start breaking your own rules, your own principles, you're a terrible person. Now we're in a very, very subjective and interesting philosophical conversation about evil. Because I go, at the end of the day, Thanos might have believed himself and not changed what he was doing, but he did have no problem killing half the world. 
<laughs> oh, I didn't say Thanos yeah, was the, right. The scope of his vision is a little is, <laughs> is so much darker than. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, yeah. Uh, Viren is, is, is mis. Well, I think Viren is misguided on his genuine desire to protect his family and protect yes. the realm. And I think he has like a genuine desire to honor King Harrow. Like I think he believes in the work they were doing together. Um, and he just goes so far astray from that that like, yeah. How much do you honor the original intention? How much do you say like, well, he, you know, there's like, there's a good core in there. Whereas mm -hmm. like Thanos is. Uh, yeah, someone who's very committed to an ideology that's kind of more inherently. And Viren gets influenced like very easily by people. Like he just thinks that yeah. if this person is like higher than others, then he should listen to them. No matter if they're good or if they're bad. And he's always going to try to like convince himself that everything that he's doing is for a good cause. No All right, matter Sasha, how bad it is. What, what do you think? In season three... Is is there anything left redeemable inside Viren in season three? I, See, th that's where I'm at. That's where I, I mean, like some some parts, it's like I get where he's coming from with certain things. Like he still wants to do what's best for people, but he doesn't but, realize that everything that he's doing is horrible. But when when okay, so. That plan to march in there and do what he like, he knew he was going to be put in front of the, the sun sunstone. Like he, he knew it because we see that he was prepared for what happened to him, which means that at some point that was his plan. So I, uh, he's got a parasite on him, right? Like that he chose to, he, he, the it's, whole like, thing. it's like, I don't know. It's like addiction. You can't blame someone while, while, while they're being poisoned for all their yeah. actions, right? They have a redemption. It's you want them to have their, I love Viren. Don't what? you know? It's kind of his job, right? He's the high mage. Like, he's got to pursue that knowledge. So, yeah, you put the ear bug. In, you put the bug in your ear. Yeah. No, yeah he's, he's pretty messed up. But, but here's the thing. I, I, I give that elf more credit than I give Viren. He, he poked him. And he said, Viren, what do you want? Why are you here? I'm, I'm here to help you. Why are you here? And when you Viren, believe Erebus? <laughs> when did he lie? Tell me one time where that guy lied. We Viren. just don't know his big picture yet. But he's not lying we about can, it. We can see what he's painting. We can see? see exactly. That's what I'm trying to look. If you the most important rules that you'll make are the ones that you make for yourself. And mm -hmm. when you start breaking your own rules, I'm sorry, buddy, but that's some Darth Vader's stuff going on like you can't break your own rules and Viren doesn't have rules because every mm. situation like Sasha said if you put Viren next to somebody else he changes the rules and you can't I'm mm. not saying Thanos is great nobody right. should emulate him let's kill that son of a <laughs> give, me, give me the hammer I'm gonna smack him in the face all that <laughs> but he's at least Consistent. honest and he's yeah. honest. He right. is honest. And at the end mm. of the day, I'll take honesty over some lion sack of shoot bag. Are you seeing the chat right now? Because they are hilarious. <laughs> I love the chat. I love. Oh, I haven't been seeing chat this whole time. Well, I I I just heard heard it. It. And they've had some really, really good point. points. They've yeah. had some good points that we. Oh, have there it about. is. There's an app. Oh, hey, y'all. Hi. Sorry, I didn't say anything to oh. all the stuff you said. I wasn't it looking. What's okay. up, friends? <laughs> but hopefully this is before I explicitly stated that Thanos is not appropriate and we should bash his face in and we should Oh, totally. <laughs> okay. Oh, I was just hearing you saying yeah. that you were defending. I know you're not defending. You're just saying, yeah, he, he at least was a man of principles in his own way, in his own misguided ways, which I, I kind of get what you're saying. I kind of get what you're saying. Because yeah. if your plan involves amassing all the power in the universe, you can kind of then come up with whatever the last step is. And you can come up with a way better step than kill half the people. Oh, for sure. That's a bad, pl that's a bad plan. So you're committed to a horrible plan. <laughs> a terrible plan. A terrible plan. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't contribute to this conversation. Oh, that's no. I can no. right? You better see you believe, all the Avengers movies. There's a lot to catch up on. So. I haven't I, seen them. Because <laughs> look, I... Hi, hi, Dragon's Eye. Hi, Bella. Hi, all the people. The hi, when I wasn't looking. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Did you, did, did you did you did you oh fantastic uh did you did anyone cry at endgame 
Uh, yeah. Oh, I took right. Yeah. Was, yeah. I did not see that coming. I thought they would stop him. I was like, holy fruit tart. You Dude, just, yeah. When, I mean, is, are we past the point of spoiler alert? We can talk about this. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, Amari. How <laughs> come the first Guardians? Amari you haven't even seen Ant Man and that. the Wasp. I'm not going to, I won't spoil it, but. Don't worry. Shame I'll, on you, Paula. You need I'll, to watch it. I'll watch it sometime. I won't remember. I'm Should, probably not going to. There's a, there's a moment where a certain younger hero goes. Spider Man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like, I was not prepared. I I mean, for for personal, when Black Panther, I, I, yeah, I just. uh, It's hard. It's hard to watch. That was a journey. I went from sad, and then when BP went, I was like, oh, he needs to die. Like, I I, I was ready to, like, get out of my feet and and murder someone. Hey, fucking hammer. Yeah, Yeah. that was the last straw for me. Yeah. I, I, my, my children left screaming, yelling, throwing things. It was some, some of the most unbelievable filmmaking I've ever seen. So how much candy did you give them? <laughs> oh no! Oh, Paula, you watch, you watch, and you see if you don't pick up the closest thing to you and just like you want to, you want to solve it. But how oh, many movies in is Endgame? Like, how many do I have to watch before well, I get like, there? Only like twenty six. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, but there's really oh, make sure you don't skip the second Thor. It's very important. Oh, Every time there's like an animated Marvel audition, I'm like, I don't even, how do I do this research <laughs> at this point? It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Just watch the movies called Avengers. You literally could watch just the ones called Avengers. Yeah. And yeah, it, the other stuff is for like, oh, I really love this character. And they then do you pay go, off some other stuff, but it's not. I like, watched yeah. Deadpool. Is that in the same world? Oh, heck it's- yeah. It's well, it is in the is it it is in the comics in the same world and it's yeah. likely going to be in the same world in the films going forward. But no, at the time it was released, it's not in the same world. Deadpool yeah. is one of the greatest movies ever made. Great movie. But the torture yeah. was like upsetting. But <laughs> yeah, the torture. Yeah, some of that movie's a bit much. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Oh, that's right up. He's the same kind of humor as Callum and uh, Sokka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the humor was great. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's literally Sokka. And it's like a Sokka that will cut your head off or shoot yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you guys want to talk about Bridgerton or BBC, like anything with petticoats, I'm in. Oh, but, you're like, uh, give me a petticoat. I haven't watched Bridgerton yet. What? I haven't either. You haven't watched the Avengers movies. How dare you? Oh, my God. Watch Bridgerton. <laughs> I did watch this year. The, the, um, the Anya Taylor Joy Emma, I loved that. That was a great oh, time. Oh yeah, that's the last Regency drama that I watched. It was really oh. good. That was okay. great. The I, New Little Women was great too. I mean, that's legitimately one of my favorite movies in years and years and years. That's the the that's the. Uh, I watch a lot of big blockbusters. I love these big block- blockbusters. I love the Avengers movies, or whatever. Leaving the theater, Little Women was the like first time in like ten years that I've left a movie going like, well, I'm gonna watch that movie every year for years that's an instant like classic that will be in my life i can't wait to like show this movie to uh, we have a we have a 10 month old daughter i'm like i can't wait to share this with her that movie just like did that movie is so full of life i just adored it bridgerton is not appropriate for 10 month old daughters what is bridgerton no. It's a new show. It's very okay. nice. I haven't watched Bridgerton, but I did have half of the plot explained to me last night because Lisa has been watching Bridgerton. Uh, and she's like, you're not going to watch this, right? All right, here's what happens. And then this yeah. guy, he doesn't want to have kids. All right. So, so we're going to have to leave it here. I'm I'm doing another panel. I knew that I knew we were going to get this. There's no way we could ever end this. So thank heavens there's another one. Uh, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Um, it's a blast. Um, I'm so excited that everybody has hangouts coming up with you guys. Thank you uh, for all that you did to make Dragon Prince one of the greatest stories ever told. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm excited to tell more of that story as well. Okay, it's so nice to see you guys. Are we? I'm in an. I'm in another. I'm in a VIP panel now. Yep. Is anybody yep. else in that I'll one? We all get scratched.